Well, hey boys and girls of the YouTube world, today Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1957 Ford F100 hot rod pick em up truck running. this thing up uh, a few months back down in the big city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where it's probably tropical right now and they're not moving a foot of snow like we had to do all day today. But let's uh, take a look at this thing. So found this thing on MSRA Line Chaser, Minnesota Street Route Association. If you remember that, they send out a flyer every month on a flyer. It's a, more of a catalog and uh, it's got the classifieds in the back so of course that's the first thing I flipped to. This thing was in there, it's actually been in there for quite a while. Price is pretty reasonable and it uh, it's a fridge and it's my favorite year of fridge. 57 is the only year that they got the single headlights. They kind of got the same grill that carried over from the 56's. I think it's similar anyway. This one's got the chrome version of it. I'm not sure if this bumper is original but I don't think it is. What do you think, Duff? Is that an original bumper? He says definitely not. And then I think 57s and 8s got this, what I call the washboard hood on it. Pretty swanky. And yeah, this thing's got some hot rod history. He picked it up at an auction in Iowa. He's had it for like five or 10 years, never did nothing with it. So we picked it up. The dead giveaway is the uh, scamper white letters on the back, 11-15 LTs. Yeah, those are sweet. These things came with factory nine inch. 57 was the first year of the nine inch in both cars and pickups. Fun fact, 57 Ford cars, I think 57 eights and nines are all the same, but they're the narrowest nine inch that came in a car. And I think 66 to 77 Broncos are the narrowest nine inch that came in a four wheel drive or SUV, whatever you wanna call it. Cars are four and a half bolt pattern. Pickups are five on five and a half. Duff, you wanna check this thing out? Oh yeah, look at that custom vinyl door panel. Shag carpet, these things are always rotten in the steps. Seat's been recovered. Pontiac taco meter. Yeah, that's right, she goes up to 7K. Doesn't look like they did anything with the headliner. I think that's a Mopar stereo where they got the uh, tuner knobs over to the right there. Duff sure likes the shag carpet though. Duff, show them the shifter. It's got a Hurst boot on it. I don't know if it's a Hurst. It kind of looks like a water shut off knob. Duff says, this thing's mine. I'm driving it. Seat isn't too bad. Floors are wasted. Oh, floors are wood, so they're fine. We'll just uh, get some new green treat. And uh, the seat is also mounted via the wood as well. Nothing but the finest wood billies down there in Iowa land. I'm sure somebody with khakis was driving this thing. Oh, look at that, they wrapped the whole dash. Well, not the whole dash, but the insert there. Got a nice drawer pull knob on the glove box. Freaking sweet. Oh, that shifter is pretty awesome. That gas pedal is not correct. I don't know if that's, I think it's on a Ford or a Mopar. I'm guessing Ford. I'm guessing it's what the engine came out of. There's a surprise there too, of course. Duff is camping out there. That must be that bracing underneath the step. We just won't worry about that. They call these 57 to 60 Fords the fridges. This is a short box fleet side. The box really isn't that bad. There's single wall, so anything that's left in the box likes to rust out the box sides. Yeah, the floor is there. It's pitted up, but she's there. There's a lot of snow in here. It's now turned to water. I think that's a factory rear bumper, which is chrome, so that's kind of swanky. Yeah, tailgate chains, they seen better days. We're gonna need a tail light. I'm sure it's been repainted. Looks like somebody put some custom pinstripes on her when they did it. It'd be cool to find some history on this thing. Looks like those are some custom made 15 by 10s, I'd say, on the back. I'm guessing the windows broke out on that side. This side's busted out. Wing windows delaminated. Windshield seal is rotten. Missing a wiper. And that wiper looks like it's got a great big washer holder in place. Sorry, I'll quit picking your new pickup apart. Missing a hubcap over here. 
I did have to uh, take the brakes off on one of the wheels to get it to roll. I don't even remember which one it was. You want to open the hood or what? No? Oh, you're good at that. She was uh, pretty bondoed up there, wasn't it, Duff? Yeah, the old chin has been whacked pretty hard. It looks like they uh, filled her in with bondo. Of course, that didn't stay. So this is the hot rod part of it. He claims this is a 351 Cleveland, and I can tell just by the valve covers that that is not a Cleveland. Ford likes going by how many bolts are in the valve covers. Looks like this has got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. Um, so I'm guessing this is a 289, 302, or 351 Windsor. It says 351 2V, and then it says C9AE, so C is 60 and 9, obviously it's 9, so it's a 69 engine. I do believe they had the 351 Windsor in 69. So we'll have to uh, do some digging to see what exactly this is. I don't know how you tell on a Ford other than to measure the stroke. If we get to that point, we'll measure it then. Looks like they got a cute little car radiator, probably out of that same 69 whatever that they grafted it in here. Since it is an automatic, they left the master cylinder for the hydraulic master cylinder in there. Looks like we got the ballast resistor for the points ignition in there. Oh yeah, no CDI box or whatever Ford calls their DuraSpark box, so must just still be the old 69 points. Looks like they got a couple of voltage regulators over there. One probably from the 69 and one original one. Yeah, only two of the three wires are hooked up on the original one. So it looks like we got a lot of wiring going on over here. We got the easy to steal starter solenoid for Fords. We got a voltage regulator off of what I would guess is the 69. I believe that's the horn relay, probably the original one. And this is, looks like the voltage regulator for the original Ford. 57 version and uh, only two of the three wires are hooked up so I'm guessing they just bypass that one. The wiring doesn't look that bad actually. I mean other than these two wires that are just twisted together here. No block heater on this thing? Must have been a summer ride. How about uh, heater hoses? Oh yeah, I got a heater hooked up. I'm guessing if we could date this Presto Light battery, we could see when this thing was taken off the road. There's no plates on it, so I don't know. And uh, of course it wasn't punched out for the month in the year. Well, maybe it was, but highly unlikely. What else we got going on here? I don't know. Jimmy, check the dipstick. It's way over full, so that's always not good. Probably a bunch of water in the bottom. Coolant? Remove slowly. Okay. Looks like they got that wedged up against the core support. She's pretty dry in there. So that ain't good. Originally this pickup would have came with a 223 six cylinder or like a 292 Y block. So thank goodness it's not a Y block. But look at these custom engine mounts. You can mount a snow plow off of those. That's pretty neat right there. That's pretty neat. There's some pretty ugly wiring going on up here, but we won't worry about that so much. Let's see if it's a two barrel. I guess we're gonna have to uh, get players to get that. Does the throttle linkage work? Oh boy. Carburetor's frozen. Not off to a good start here. How's about turning the fan? Uh, no. Duh. This might be a very short will it run video. Yeah, right. Like we ever just give up that easy. I suppose let's start ripping into stuff. Whereas the first thing we do is drain the oil to see how much water is in the bottom of this thing. Probably not the worst idea I've had. I guess we'll crawl underneath it and see what we got. Why does Ford always have to use the largest drain plugs ever? I mean, a 7 ace, really? You drain the oil that much faster? 
What's going to be behind door number three? I'm betting water. Lots and lots. Oh no, there's some oil. We're going to miss the pan for sure. Oh no. She's got oil. I'm half tempted to just put the plug back in, but we'll just dump the oil back in the valve cover if need be. So you can see by the axle here that this thing has been sitting in the dirt for a while. And also you can see they used the cross member from whatever they stole the engine out of, because Ford liked these, I don't know what you call them, tubular engine cross members. And they just took that whole thing and just kind of grafted it in here, which ain't all bad. I mean, I've seen worse. Speaking of worse, I just seen worse. So we uh, thought we were getting lucky by not having any water in the oil pan, but uh, I just noticed the main leaf spring is busted. So we should probably find some leaf springs. Um, Cause this is the good side. The passenger side, it busted them all. Must have been from all those wicked hard launches. Neutral drops, I don't know, not good. Looks like they stole the cross member out of the same car. And to torture open a little bit to get the tranny cross member in there, but again, not the worst work. That front cab mount is wasted. There's that cross member that goes in the step area that rots out. Super rotten. Duff is over there sleeping in his kennel because he gave up on this thing. He knows the luck we have with Fords. Class packs, our favorite. And rotten. And that's where the exhaust stops on that side. Driver's side glass back is way better. Oh, dumped it right before the rear end. Use a little number nine wire, Quick Dick McDick. This has been Spotlight on the number nine wire. Until next time, this is Quick Dick McDick reminding you a man will never get tired of pulling on his number nine wire. In combination with a rubber hanger. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. What do we have going on here? They took two drive shafts and just kind of sleeved them together. Oh, now we got to get this thing running to see how bad it vibrates. It doesn't look like they're in phase either. Usually you want to get the front yoke and the back yoke, you know, on the same plane. It looks like they're a couple degrees off. And there's a giant dent in the drive shaft. So this thing it's going to be a fun ride if we get her going. I really need to know how they made that work. I presume this thing was running and driving at some point. Typical 9-inch needs a pinion seal. I wonder if it's got a posi in it. Probably not. Dog legs on the back of the cab by the cab corners are MIA as well. Again, pretty common on these fridges. So while the oil's draining, let's pull that hair cleaner off and get a better look at that carbonator. This thing has definitely not been off in years. I like when they use lug nuts as spacers. Classy Iowa things. Oh, just a little mouse house, not bad. I'm just gonna take this off, throw it away. Doesn't look like they made it through the air filter. I believe this is a Motorcraft or Holly 2100. Huge bolt pattern, two barrel. And she's stuck. So, now what? Oh, it was real fast. It had one orange plug wire. Should we pull the valve cover off? Is that an old mud flap or a floor mat for a battery mount? Oh, it's rope. I thought it was a bungee cord. Oh no, she's a rope. Wow. Iowa is getting after it. I think I'm gonna go underneath and put the drain plug in and see if there's anything we can get at on the flex plate of this Ford, but I don't think we can because Ford doesn't give you any way to get on the flex plate. I think it's only GM that does that because the Mopars don't either. So we might have to make a tool for the crank on this silly thing too. So on a GM, there's an inspection cover on the bottom of the flex plate, so you can get at the teeth and you can put a bar on there and try to turn it over. Well, the Ford, the inspection cover is on the front. 
so you can't get in there. I know some guys take the starter out and you can kind of get in there, but that doesn't seem that good either. So I think we'll try the uh, crank turning tool that we made. I think that fit on the 360 that we had on the Ford, didn't we? Oh yeah! Oh no! Fit on the Mopar. If we're gonna make a new one, we'll make a new one. And uh, we'll pull the spark plugs out so we can take a glance in there and look at the spark plugs and see what those look like. Duff's interest is waning significantly. Yeah, it's getting late. Long day of moving snow. All right, let's pull some spark plugs out, see how that looks. And we can always uh, spray some croil in there. That'll loosen it up right overnight. Put the vinegar in there. I know. That plug don't look so bad. Champion 860s. Again, not rusty. A little bit of carbon. Oh. That one's gonna be a problem. I think these Fords, they number them starting on the passenger side front, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So number seven's got some humidity in there. Oh, why? Eight looks good too. Oh my gosh, the mice ate this heater hose down to nothing, just the insides. Worth mentioning though, that this swap is so good that they use factory upper and lower radiator hoses. See, it can be done. Engine swaps, not requiring flexi hoses. Well done, Iowa. Well done. Yeah, a little, uh, little bit of rust on number one there. Not too bad. Yeah, a little bit of rust on number two as well. Number three, looks pretty good. Four, pretty rusty. Well, I think we know what we're gonna see, but let's take a peek in there. See just how bad these cylinders are. Well, let's see what the schlong tells us. Uh, number one looks pretty good. Number two, got some cobwebs, but not a bunch of rust in there. Three, uh-oh, what's that? Oh, she's at top dead center. Can't see much, but I think it'll be okay. Four, oh, four looks real good. Very nice. Whoa, 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 very nice. Uh, number five. Again, top dead center, so can't see much, but Looks pretty good. Six. Looks good. Seven. Here's the one that the plug looked the worst. Oh, some cobwebs. Charlotte, is that you? I mean, I can't see real well, but I don't see anything uh, too scary in number seven. And last but not least, numero ocho. Oh, that looks freaking phenomenal. The schlong does not lie. So, I think we'll uh, spray some croil in there. Maybe pop the valve covers off, see what they look like. So we don't bend a bunch of stuff up, because that's what these Fords like to do when we crack them loose. Ah, uh, shoot, and it, because these rocker arms are stuck, it bent the push rods. Oh. So we, uh, we screwed it up, but, um, I think it was already pre-screwed. And then see if we can't put something on that uh, crank pulley down there to turn her over. Maybe we just stick a battery in it and it just turns over. How dumb would that be? Easy enough to try, I guess. Let's spray some lube in there first. Busting out a new can of Mr. Benoit's Croil. Well, what's holding these battery cables on? Oh boy, they've been on there a while. I wonder if collectors are looking for uh, Bristol Light batteries. Ooh, let's slide the old Nancy in here. Sorry Nancy, you're not old. Clean those up a bit.
No smoke. All right. I always get these mixed up. 50-50-90 rule. 50-50 odds if you're wrong 90% of the time. Told you. I think it moved. She's just a little sticky. Oh. Uh, is that fan hitting that radiator? Or is that just dancing around that much? Oh yeah, fan definitely hits the little radiator hose. Oh, I just noticed all the stuff that they cut out down here, but that fan is definitely hitting the little radiator hose. So the radiator's gotta go down or the engine's gotta go up? Better yet, we just take the fan off and then that's not gonna be a problem for now. My guess is that the engine mounts settled, rotted, deteriorated, left the building, and the engine sank down a little bit in the uh, cradle there, and that fan's hitting that little radiator hose. So, engine needs to come up. We ain't got time for that, though. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, we're just gonna pop the fan off quick. We'll put it on later. If need be if we get to that point but this thing freaking turns over how sweet is that carburetor doesn't turn but we're getting there so what do we need to pull that off half inch let's just take this whole belt off so well yeah, that wouldn't be any fun. Let's put some bolts in it, short ones. Couldn't find any bolts short enough, 5 16 fine thread, and I'm worried about them, I don't know, hitting the cast thing on the water pump on the backside. So, in the spirit of cobbling things together, we just put a stack of washers on there. That's right, we're not above it. And definitely no need for four bolts. Puddin says, if two don't hold it, four never would have. I just noticed the crank is just about touching that low radiator hose too. So, I'm going to just push on it and make a little clearance. No problem. I guess since we got to turn over, we don't want to be picking up any old fuel. I think the fuel tank is behind the seat in this. I guess I didn't even pay attention, that's where it should be. Let's uh, pull that fuel line off. Oh man, she's even wet with fuel. Doesn't smell like fuel, doesn't smell bad, but... Water, maybe? I don't know. Maybe the Rona made it so I can't smell anything. I don't know what to do now. We gotta turn it over. I guess we could check for compression. We should probably put oil back in it. We're going to be turning it over a bunch. We could, we could check for compression without having oil on it. It's not going to hurt it, right? Sure hope we didn't bend a bunch of push rods by some locked up rocker shafts. We haven't had a Ford Windsor on this channel yet, I don't think. Just FEs and uh, 223s. They like bending rocker arms. Arms? Push rods. Rock arms like seasoned bent push rods, but this one's turning over a lot faster than any of them ever did. Let's uh, do the quick finger compression test. Nice part about no fan is no fingers are gonna be lost. It was at this moment that he knew he fed up. Famous last words. Good? Real good. Seven was that rusty plug, and that one's not so good. It's like a pile of oil around number eight. On the inner fender, so eight's good. One. Not super good. Two's good. Well, that's actually three. Two isn't so good. Four's good. Now one. Good. I think she's worth putting oil in, and then we'll get some spark, 
and either have to clean up a carburetor or see if we can find one of them. I think we'll get her cleaned up. I mean, everything else is cleaning up all right, so maybe we'll even spin a new filter on it. Maybe. Look at that, found a B2 Baldwin filter on the shelf. Fits Fords, you can tell because I wrote it on there. And we got some Chevron Delo, Delo, Delo? 10W30 with ISOSYN advanced technology. It's good for diesel engines, heavy duty. It's SYN blend, so it's way too good for this, but that's what we got. Comment down below, are frams as bad as everybody says they are? A lot of horror stories on the internet. I've never had any issues, but I gave up on using them about 10 years ago. This is most definitely not like Mortsky Repair to uh, change oil and filter on an engine before they ever even get it running. One that was stuck just moments ago. What does the world come to? Got our oil changed, got our positive battery cable unhooked. I'm gonna spray some lube on the carburetor and we're gonna shut her down for the night. She's getting late and uh, we got a big day of getting this thing going tomorrow. So we're gonna call her a night. A little croil is good, a lot's better. That throttle shaft will just free itself up in the morning, I bet. Probably free right now. Nope, definitely stuck. All right, enough for today. Cutting out. Well, I'm gonna get back at it today. You just hang out there and relax, okay? Capiche. Well, let's see if our carb soak did anything overnight. Throttle shaft's gonna move? I bet not. Sure enough. Let's put some leverage on there, you know? Really get after it. Oh, there we go. Probably not the right thing to do. Oh, now we're bending the bracket. Yeah, we better take her apart. So did a little research last night, and turns out if you got 16 bolts holding the intake down, eight on each side, it's a 351 Windsor. If it's got six on each side, similar to a small block Chevy, it's a 289 or 302. So we got these two up here, one here, two here, one more here, two back there. That makes eight. So it is a 351 Windsor. So I guess that's better than a 289 302. Maybe, I mean horsepower wise, but I think they're harder to find parts for. From what I've seen anyway, right Farmstead? I'm gonna pop this cap off to get these wires out of the way and then we'll get that carburetor off. base of the carb doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look terrible on the inside. So hopefully we can get her freed up relatively easy. Oh boy. See, I don't know what we're gonna do. Clamp her in the old vise and work her back and forth a little bit. Spray some looby dooby on there. See if she comes out of it. This does have the automatic choke option on it. Let's see if we can get her loosened up. Posted a picture of the old Prestolite battery to Instagrammer last night. Somebody said, check the date code. So the code is 5K2108TP. TP for my bungalow. I'm guessing five means the fifth. K is the 11th month, which is November. Two would be the year, maybe? So the 5th of November, 1982. Well, if that's the case, this thing's been off the road for almost 40 years. Well, provided since that battery was new. So let's say that battery lasted five years. Let's just say 35 years she's been off the road. Seven, 34 years. 
Whatever. You get it. Let's get a carb loose. Is there any way to clamp this thing? Oh, let's put a new gasket on it. Let's leave that one on there so we can clamp on it and not worry about modern up the surface. How about that? Not the dumbest thing. As we snap the ear off by cranking on it. They're moving a little bit. There we got a good bite. Nope, not on the carb though. All right, and it almost, oh, it is returned on its own. It's pretty good, pretty good. Duff is not impressed. Carburetors are not his thing. Rides are though. Let's see if we can find a fresh base gasket for this thing. Hopefully we didn't screw the base of the carb up or the linkage too much. She was stuck pretty good. Looks like we found a CarQuest G26746 carburetor mounting gasket. Oh, made in the good old United States of America. I think that'll work for what we need. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Oh my gosh. This is some freaking Napa esque stuff right here, though. Fornt up. Yeah, somebody in the USA needs to learn how to spell front. I was so excited that it told us which way to put this on, but I don't know which is the front side. We need to work on our spelling, America. Get the old super scraper out. Ford and their silly heat riser vacuum adapter plates. Now let's uh, install our gasket front up. It does have this little opening right here, but it's blocked off, so should be good to go. I'm sure that carburetor is going to be no good, but at least she's uh, free-ish. I don't like that gas pedal linkage. Maybe we tighten her up some more. Seems like the gas pedal definitely isn't getting full throttle. For sure, we're getting about half throttle. So a couple things that tell me this thing wasn't a real hot rod. This guy said it was a drag truck. That's what it was. Oh, it's an old drag truck. So I was thinking like, yeah, you know, dual quads, this and that. No, it's a single two barrel gas pedal hooked up that only gets half throttle. This thing should go back to about here. I think the gas pedal's binding on the floor in there. We could fix that. Really all it needs is just a shorter throttle linkage. And no headers. I mean, if you're gonna go fast, you gotta have headers, especially back in the day. Whatever. Let's see if we can get some sparkage now. It actually, it looks real good in here, surprisingly enough. That's a ground, that wire's bare, but that should be fine. Points are a little crody. Oh yeah, just give her the old Mortsky flick with your finger. Should be fine now. So let's hook the battery back up, run a jumper wire over to the positive side of the coil and see what we got. We're going to need the coil wire back off that distributor too. Alright, so we got sparkage. What's well, going to be grounded? No fan to worry about. No spark. Well, we got power there because it's turning over and we got that hooked to the other end of the loser switch the positive side of this so let's hope until the points are closed give these suckers a flick oh we got power in there now still nothing might have to clean them up look our power wire Stick our Ponzi file in there. 
Give him a couple flicks. Yes, for good luck. Now let's see what we got. All kinds of good hot spark. Okay. Put our plugs back in. Give her some hot sauce, right? Just that easy. Let's give her a little hot sauce. Somebody was kind enough to send us some two-stroke oil, so now we got two-stroke gas for all the upper cylinder lubrication. Where is the vent on these things? Let's see these guys. Hopefully. Well, here goes nothing. First start in 35 years. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Sounds like I can hear spark in there. Hmm. Nothing? She's trying. We need more gas. Close. You can see an oil leak on the floor, so let's check that out. Is that engine oil? Hopefully it's not coming outside of the block. I don't see anything up here. Pretty steady drip, whatever it is. Oh, that's definitely transmission fluid. The tranny cooler lines wrap along the oil pan here. And one of those must have rubbed through or rotted through. Perfect. Other thing is, I don't see a dipstick for the transmission anywhere around here. So how are we filling that up? Where's the dipstick, Jimmy? That's the vacuum hose. Clearly with that leak, we're going to need to address that. So at some point we'll go underneath and figure that out. But see if we can get it running first, and then we'll worry about fixing the tranny cooler line and finding the dipstick so we can top it off. Don't run, we don't need to do that, but I think she's gonna go. Let's give her some of the good stuff that's got upper cylinder lubricant already in it, even though we don't have a nozzle for it. We can fix that. Come on, some of it's gotta get in there. Ho oh, ho ho! You can hear the transmission hissing all over. It's alive! I think it'll go. We gotta fix that tranny cooler line because it's hissing pretty good down there. Yeah, we're definitely losing transmission fluid. We should fix that. And holy buckets for soybeans and rust, Batman. And smoke. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm sure the mice were carrying the beans up in the exhaust. Good stuff. Smoked up the shop a little bit. Duff still has zero excitement. Wanna go for a ride? Now he's got the excitement. I was just teasing you, it's gonna take a little bit yet. I'm gonna unhook the coil. Maybe I should hook the battery charger up too. She's getting a little weak. Maybe we gotta hook fuel up to it too. I think that'll help the whole situation. 
What would really help is a different carburetor because that thing's not going to be good. But I'm going to go underneath, see what we can't do to fix up that tranny cooler line. And then I'm also going to see if we can't find out why there's no dipstick. Wish me luck. It really makes me have to take a leak too. So one underneath, unhook the transmission cooler lines going into the transmission. And we're just going to put these barb adapters on and some 5 16 transmission cooler hose. See that? Transmission oil cooler hose. SAE J10019. You can't use fuel hose. It'll work for a little while and then it'll fail. And uh, then you probably won't have a transmission anymore if you don't catch it in time. Always use transmission oil cooler hose. I don't know what it is about it, but I, it seems like whatever's in transmission fluid eats up fuel line and uh, they cause issues. I don't like to use hose. I prefer steel lines, but this will work for what we're doing here. And then I got some of these inverted flare to barb adapters. They're slightly different, but they got the chamfer on the inside so that they'll work with inverted flare. Nothing fancy. And we'll get some good old American made hose clamps. Should be good to go. All right, I'm gonna go do that. Oh, and while I was under there, I found the dipstick. It's hidden right here by the manifold. Right behind the mud flap. Of course. So that's good. We don't have to worry about finding a dipstick. So we got our boat tank hooked up. Got our electric fuel pump if we need it. We'll probably use that to try to prime this mechanical fuel pump. Let's uh, see if it'll take off now. Oh, we got nothing. Why do we got nothing? Oh, for cheese and rice. Well, now I don't want to crank over. We know we got power because the fuel pump's running. If our solenoid decided to give up the ghost or what? Well, let's bypass the starter solenoid. kidding me. The starter just up and decided to go out. Well, I guess I'll go underneath to check the connection on the starter that somehow went bad. Was that wire always laying there? Probably. Looks like a ground. I don't know. Wiggle the starter connection down there. Let's see what happens now. I don't get it. What could we have possibly screwed up? I guess we're due to work on a starter. Maybe it's just stuck in gear. Starter Bendix. Or if we try turning the engine. Well, of course, the belt just wants to spin. Well, now. Still nothing. What the French toast? I guess I could go underneath hit it with a hammer. That always fixes them. Now it's gotta go, right? I mean, it doesn't. Guess I'm pulling the starter off. I mean, what else did you guys expect? I just don't get how that thing went bad when it worked fine, but mere moments ago. All right, we got this thing out. Now I'm sure we'll bench test it and it'll be just fine. So I guess I'll just put it back in and it'll fix itself. For dumb. So before we whammy this starter on, when I was trying to figure out my engine size debacle, it said, that look at the casting number, but conveniently Ford hit them behind the starter. So since we got the starter off, look at the casting number here. The casting number for the block is C90E-6015. So that decodes it as a 69351W. And that little tiny date code up there says 8, D18, so that means it was cast on 
April 18th, 1968. That doesn't make sense. It should be 1969, but whatever. Maybe they were building engines way ahead of time, like eight months ahead of time. So that just confirms it's a 69 351 Windsor. All right. Now let's stick that starter back in there. Yay. Yay! And that's your useless information on Ford engine identification. The more you know. Okay. Here goes nothing. What the heck? Did our cable go bad? Do we have a bad connection? I don't get it. I guess we'll try some new battery cables. The battery shouldn't be that dead. It should at least make it go thud. Sure enough, seven volts. While I was away for lunch, I left it hooked up and uh, must have just drained the battery. I just did all that mess on own because I'm too lazy to just check a battery and check the simple things. Tech tip of the day, just start with the simple things. I guess we'll throw this on the charger and see if we can't round up another battery. Perfect. We could edit this out. We'll leave it in there because uh, I'm sure some of you have done dumb things like that too. I said I didn't put a new starter on. I don't like those posts being up underneath there, but it's a Ford battery. You can tell because it's got the F, which means the terminals are backwards. Just the way Ford likes it. Now she's going to crank. By the power of Grayskull. <laughs> Dumb. Guess I'll put everything back together now. Maybe we'll bypass some of this wiring that they got on the solenoid up here because I'm guessing that's where our draw is at. One, two, three, four, five eyelets coming off that solenoid. I feel like that's a bit excessive. What do I know? Now I can go over with the loser switch. Perfect. Try number two. She just wanted some fuel. It's alive! Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Actually, it didn't sound too bad. She sounds a little boggy. I don't know if that's timing. Crappy plug wires, crappy plugs for that carburetor, but she's running. Sounds like the timing's off. Oh, yeah, well, we don't have the vacuum advance hooked up. Whoopsies! So I bet if we hook that up, that'll help. Well, look who woke up to come see what was going on. Yeah. Let's see if we can get some coolant in it. I noticed that this really chewy hose is chewed right through. So I think we're going to just plug the heater hoses. Also, we got to figure out how to lift the engine up and get clearance for that radiator hose down there and the fan and everything else. I'm guessing we can't move the radiator down. We'll have to move the engine up. And we need to find some leaf springs too, probably, and get brakes. Let's work on the uh, cooling debacle first. What is, the bracket isn't even attached to anything. This side it is. Well this side, they wanted it to be up high like this side, but they couldn't, because then it would run into that lower pulley. Let's work on cooling system things.
Okay, so here's what we're looking at. Here's the engine mount. Here's the bracket that holds it. And there's a 7 16 or half inch bolt going through right here that mounts it. So I think what we're gonna do is take that nut off, jack up on the oil pan, and then try to slip some shims in between here. Oh, you can see the engine mount is torn. So that'll be temporary. Maybe if we can find some new engine mounts, that will be the long-term solution. Because I can't imagine that they put this thing in here, had that interfering like that. But maybe. Oh, look at those welds. Not bad, Ray Charles. Not bad at all. All right, I'm gonna pull these off and I'm gonna measure these springs while I'm under here, see if we can find some leaf springs. Well, found us a pair of springs. They're on an axle. Oh, we just gotta go pull them off in a snowbank in the dark. If we got everything you need, because it's uh, a couple miles out of town too. Probably best we do this in the dark. Just kidding, we're not stealing them. Got a pry bar, hammer, socket set, impact. Grab some croil, flashlight, gloves. What more do we need? Duff to protect me from wild animals, that's all. Well, Duff, supposed to protect me from scary things. Tech tip of the day, always bring an extra battery, or at least bring a full one and not the one that's on one bar. Dang it. All right, try number two. We brought fully charged batteries times two. What do you think, we're gonna get it this time? You're just gonna be looking for rabbits, I know. Thanks, man, you were a lot of help. Couldn't have done it without you. Such a good poppers. Such a good poppers. Well, if that wasn't a bunch of dinking around, huh, Duff? But, at least we got the springs we need. I didn't even measure them. I know they're out of a 58 long box. Should fit a 57 short box. Ford would be so dumb to change it from the first year to the second year they made the fridges, though, right? Duff says, yeah. So we're gonna let those thaw out, warm up, and uh, I think we're gonna punch out for tonight. I don't have any engine mounts for this thing, so we'll have to figure out some shims. I looked, and that tube cross member thing looks like ended in 64 in galaxies, so I'm guessing they took a galaxy cross member and engine mounts and put it on a later 69, because I looked at all the 69 models and all of them have a through bolt instead of a vertical single stud. So I don't know. It's some mishmash of parts, I'm thinking. Either way, uh, nobody around here is going to have engine mounts until significantly later. So we're just going to have to shimmer up. Call it good. What are you doing, you lunatic? Is it that late in the night that we need to uh, put you to bed? Weirdo. We're punching out. Duff, what do you think? You want to go underneath and swap some springs quick? You look way too comfortable in there. All right, well, Duff crashes out. I'm gonna get this thing jacked up. And on jack stands, oh, now you're gonna help? Just put it on jack stands, maybe? Okay, that sounds like work, yeah. Act disinterested. Put it on some jack stands and uh, start pulling some U-bolts and fighting all the bolts that go through the bushings because, yeah, those usually never come out that well. Looks like these are uh, pretty chewed up too. So that'll be fun. Such is life. Oh, we did find an engine mount. Boom tube did some exhaust for us on the Jeepster. He's a Ford freak. So he had a slightly used engine mount on the shelf. Hopefully it's the right one. That stud looks too big. Whatever. Ford things.
Well, I'd like to say the hard part's over. Now we gotta get the bolts out of our two new springs. Those springs ain't the greatest either, but... Duff, come check them out. What do you think? They're better, he says. So we gotta get those bolts out. These things are gonna need new bushings, but it'll get it so it's safe fish to put on the road, Inspector Duff says. So I'm gonna get those bushings out and then we'll slide these things in. Duff says, hurry up so we can go for a ride. Don't look too close underneath there. You might find some other stuff that we gotta address. All right, back at her. fell right out you'd see they got this metal sleeve around the outside and this one was worn into pretty well and usually those stick to the bolt and that's why you have to torch them out and since we don't have that sleeve in ours and the rubber bushing is pretty much wasted it's it's gone now completely gone and they were worn into the spring before so they need new bushings but at least uh, the main leaves in one piece so if I was gonna keep this thing I would put new bushings in and I would probably pull a couple leaves out to get her lower and I would probably find another axle and send it off to SIDS or somebody like that. Put a couple inch drop into it and new kingpins and brakes and everything else. But we're just gonna slam it back together because as always, we're on a budget showing you guys how to do stuff cheap. So I'm guessing these leaf springs that I got from Muffin's brother are probably gonna cost us a case of beer. So at least we won't lose the shop on this one. Well, yet. It's a Ford, so we're a long ways from driving, stopping, steering. Enough yakety yak. Let's put these springs back. Springing into action! So since we had to torch these rear hanger bolts out, they were a 7 16 by 3 half inch fine thread. We don't have any 7 16 fine thread that long. I, t to be honest, I didn't even look. So we got a 4 inch 7 16 coarse thread. It's just gonna have to do. Good enough for the girls we go with, right, Duff? Why is this lining up? I hope these are the right springs. Ford, you didn't change something mid-year, did you? Okay, front's in place. Hopefully this goes now. It should. Nice part about not having any bushings. You should be going a lot easier. Maybe. Spoke too soon. Cheese and rice. Got it. Whew. Yeah, that's how tight she is without any bushings. It'll be fine. It's got new bolts, right? Good to go. Now we just gotta do the other side and the fronts and U bolts and shock mounts. I'm done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. in place. There was an original cross member that ran across right here underneath the original engine and the brake line was tied to that. Now we just got it held in by hopes and dreams so no big deal it's just brakes. We'll let this down we're gonna pull the bolts out of the engine mounts we're gonna put a piece of wood in between the jack and the oil pan. We're gonna lift the engine up see if we can't make ourselves some clearance clearance. We have clearance clearance. Roger Roger. What's our vector Victor? Between the harmonic balancer and crank pulley and that radmeator hose should be fun. Be strong, little oil pan. Well, here's part of the deal. It looks like there's a rubber mount, and then that metal bolts the engine, and then there's this metal mount that has the stud that goes to this mount. And it's bolted to that, and that's loose. Plus the rubber is tore significantly. So I don't know if this is a factory mount or something they cobbled together. Cause I think that this mount is off of like a 64 on down galaxy. This big tubing. 
And then this does not. That mount is, looks like what we found. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Ford guys, comment. But this does not look like a 69 mount. It should have a through bolt going all the way through it, according to the interwebs, the Rock Auto. But So we're just going to put some washers in there. Try to shim that. Should be that easy, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I feel like there should be another bolt or a stud or something there. What do I know? And that rubber shouldn't have that giant gaping crack in it. Just how deep is it? Only a couple inches. Ick. So I just took a peek up top. We got all kinds of real estate up there for a fan. And between the low radiator hose and the harmonic balancer and crank pulley. So I'm gonna try to put a couple of these shims on each side. Maybe we can only get away with one, but we're gonna try two. Hopefully we get enough threads sticking through. Worst engine mount design I've seen all day. Well, got them in there. Let's see if we can get to the other side. Why doesn't that want to line up? All right, ended up going with just one shim on each side because there wasn't enough threads to catch the nut on there. I thought about actually putting like a C-clamp just to hold it because I checked up top and we had all kinds of clearance with two shims, but I don't know. We'll have to put the fan on and see what we got with one. So we could always put a longer bolt in there, but let's be honest, it needs new mounts and maybe even needs to be re-engineered. All right, let's take the weight off this jack, go up top, spin the fan on, and uh, See if we got any clearance. Oh yeah, I can almost get my finger in between the pulley and the belt and the radiator hose. So I think we'll put the fan on because that thing was really making contact. Let's see what we got. I'm sure it's gonna smash right into it and we'll have to do something different, like not run a fan. Oh yeah, right up there with flexi hoses and Kregers, electric fans. Nothing I hate worse than you're sitting at a car show and the guy next to you's fans are running on his car and he's nowhere to be found. The best is when he comes back and he throws his lawn chairs in the back and he's got a dead battery because he wired his fan up to uh, constant power instead of key power. Yeah. And then I like hearing them idle by and they get super quiet exhaust and all I hear is Yeah, sounds like a freight train coming through because he's got this big electric fan. Mechanical fans, they're the wave of the future, of the past, whatever, they work great. All right, rant over, mechanical fan time. Looks like we got plenty of real estate in between that Little radiator hose and the fan blade, so good to go. Before we set it on the ground, I'm gonna see if we can't get some sort of brakes going. I think what I'm gonna do is take that cap off, see just how terrible it looks in that master cylinder, and then we're probably gonna cap off the line going to the rear because I took one of those apart to make this thing roll. I'm pretty sure. Hopefully, that wasn't a front. I don't remember. This was months ago. Yeah, we don't need rears, burnouts, scampers. Let's blow them off. So we'll cap the rear off just to make sure that that thing isn't super nasty. I don't have much faith in that master cylinder, but it's what we got. So here we go. Surely this can't be stripped out. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Oh, for cheese and rice. Oh! Well, we got a nice access hole for filling it. Duff, you're not impressed, are you? 
Oh, who puts a threaded master cylinder cap on and then makes it out of a dissimilar material? Nice work, Ford Motor Corporation. I wonder if we can just air chisel that son of a biscuit right off there. Whatever. We're just going to fill it through the top. It is what it is. This thing's really fighting us, isn't it, pal? Yeah. Well, we gave up on the brakes because that set of brakes is right there. I capped off the rear because we didn't want rears. And the left front wheel, you can turn the wheel, but the drum stays stationary. So either I torched that one out or somebody else did. But we got no front brakes and we capped off the rear. So I guess the only thing we could do is run a new line to the rear, but the master cylinder is junk. So the only thing we could really do is replace a bunch of parts. You know we're not about doing that. So what do we do instead? We got the throttle working, didn't we? Full throttle. And we got crankage. See if it starts. It ain't gonna, but. Oh! Yes, uh, we should probably put some coolant in it before we smoke ourselves out of here and then top off the transmission and hope that works and then yeah I think we're pretty much ready for a ride. I did move the fuel tank to the inside so Duff can keep an eye on that and it doesn't slide out on us. We also replaced the old bungee cord with a made in USA 40 year old tarp strap. Got our fuel pump up here which I don't know if we're gonna need it or not but we got it in line we can hook it up. Shoot, let's uh, throw some tranny fluid in it. See if it goes forward and backwards. And throw some water or coolant or something in it. See what happens there. Pretty exciting. Oh, weird, it's not even on the stick. Duff, go check underneath, see if any's running out. Don't drink it if it is. I love spilling coolant. Just spilling in general. Look at that fancy funnel we got. Just thought about that now. Coolant's tapped off. I'm gonna jump in, start it up, run her through the gears, see if the wheels turn, and then we'll uh, check the transfusion fluid. Sound like a plan? I think so. Oh, you are alive. What are the odds it starts up again? Way too easy. You want to bump it into gear? Or bump the throttle, keep it running? You're a lot of help. I think we might need to turn the idle up just a hair. Okay, a lot, whatever. Now we'll try it. Wheels are turning. Oh, and I did spin the wheels by hand and they both spin opposite directions, so she's not a posse. The drag truck myth is completely quashed. Other than it probably pulled a sweet wheelie, it came down really hard, and that's how it broke the leaf springs. Yeah, not likely. Only Stubby Bob can do that. You know why Stubby Bob can do that? No, not because of the short wheelbase. Because it's got a Chevy engine in it. Just kidding. We love Windsors and Clevelands and Y blocks. Flathead's all the same. Little's good, a lot is better. Did you know that transmission fluid is highly flammable? 
I don't know about highly flammable, but you spit it on some exhaust manifolds and things turn ugly real quick. The whole pickup's shaking. Surely because of that drive shaft. We gotta hook that fuel pump up. Fuel pump hooked up, now it's gonna go. Oh boy, don't stand on the step. Must have just been running off whatever fuel was in the carburetor. Got that line unhooked, we got nothing. Gotta turn the shutoff valve on on the uh, fuel tank. Whoopsies. We got gas now. Oh, let's try her again. All right, here we go. Well, you got plenty of fuel now. seat gets worse every time I sit on it. Well, we got reverse and we got carbon monoxide poisoning. Let's uh, hope this thing's full and let's get out of here. Get the door open anyway. Right, Duff? Oh, we can use a little bit more. Well, that should about do it under here. I don't know what I'm forgetting. Something, I'm sure. Hopefully that don't fly open. First time seeing it on the ground since we put leaf springs in it. Yep, definitely sits too high. Oh, we should clean out that windshield. Maybe? No? I'll clean off my side anyway. I think it's on the inside. Just kidding, I think it's laminated into the middle of the glass. I think we're about ready to go. I don't think I'm worried about on this thing. The big thing that I'm worried about on this thing, I should say, is the tires. The uh, scamper may pops back here. I don't even know. Those are only like a street tire. Those look like something that should be on a swather. And that drive shaft combined with that. She's gonna be a shaky ride. What do you think, Duff? Should we go for a ride? Hold up. Let's go. Let's go. Override? No? All right. Suit yourself. Well, should we see how the old red rocket does? See if she's really a drag truck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what he said. Let's, uh, let's just hope we don't lose a tire. Here we go. I really don't like this shifter. Violently. 
right knee going towards that ditch and you subtract it and then it goes that ditch. Hey, we hit second. Oh my! Yeah, there's something in the steering box that's bound up. extra gloves. My hands are starting to get sweaty. You've had this pair of extra gloves this whole time? Yeah. We're in the Rockies. This old drag truck, she runs all right. She's a good Ford. Good Ford. Just watching the roosters fly across the road. I'm just trying to stay on the road. This is like in the movies where, where people just kind of swerve back and forth. Steering is not good on this thing. Oh man, we did hit third gear. Donut corner, Duff. What do you think? Should we try a donut? End up in the ditch? No brakes? Super sketchy steering? I hope we're not stuck right here. These tires are not good. Just a baby donut?
got a leak, you can uh, identify it, or you can see it behind you. Or you can tell what color fluid it is quite easily. Oh, this thing is so terrible. I mean, you drive great for it. You're great. You're fine. Everything is fine. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. This guy thinks I'm getting out of the way to get off the road. We're stopping. He's in for something. At least it's warm out. Between the steering, lack of brakes, and all the snow, that was one of the me, uh, more exciting rides that Duff or I have ever had. Yeah, I know, you see all the birds. All right, go get the birds. Good stuff. Good stuff. A little warm. A little warm. Just uh, pushing a little water out. Not bad. Dang it. Wasted a bunch of good coolant on that too. I'm sure, it's not that cap that doesn't have a seal in it. Oh, there's no pressure on that. Why is that? Thermostat stuck. Put that on the list. Get a new hose while we're at it. Duff, did you find those birds? Duff loves the Hoover Sneef, don't you? Yeah, get your face right in that Hoover Sneef. We kicked up a little snow on the back, huh, Duff? Yeah, these tires are like glass. Not good. Well, kids, we got a hot rotted 1957 Ford F100 back on the road that probably been sitting for roughly 35 years going by the uh, age of the battery that was in this thing. I'm guessing the tires are even older than that. The shag carpet giveaway, this thing was built in the mid to late 70s. But anyway, we got it on the road. We took it for a test drive. This thing needs a lot of work. She needs floors. Clearly got a cooling issue. Use a little wiring, some tires, brakes, steering. I don't know what it is with that steering box between being worn out and just bound up from, I don't know, the springs being broken or if it was in a collision or dropped or sat in the dirt, but it needs a steering box or it needs something because it steers super hard and it's super sloppy and it's super dangerous. So if you need this thing, because I don't, Duff's not in love with it. He doesn't approve of it. More info down in the description. This thing could be yours. It's a great start to a project, actually. Outside, it doesn't look that bad. You know, the dog leg stuff, a little bit in the bottom of the doors and the cab corners, but 
Clearly it needs all the stuff on the inside. But the box floor is good. Tailgate's got a few hooey's in it, but super good start to a hot rod. Another one in the books. I gotta go inside and have a sandwich. Warm up. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done. As long as you're having fun. I don't even know if that was fun. Scamping around in the snow, that was pert near scary. Duff wants to go for another ride. You like this thing, huh? He told me he just didn't. Duff. Where did all that rusty water come from? Sorry, Greta. How dare you! It'll be okay, Ford.